Okay, so this is the first teaching video of um, the next unit, and basically unit three for the second semester, and this will be the video that you watch for the remote day, um, tomorrow, Tuesday. So, <clears throat> on the new notes, linear inequalities. In the first one example, it says, determine which ordered pairs are solutions to the linear inequality. Well, this is when you're given one inequality, and it's really simple. You look at the first box right here. Obviously, this is x. That's y. And the way that you determine this is you plug in the x for the x and the y for the y and actually see if it makes sense. So for the first one, we have 2, and we're going to plug it in for the x. And then we're going to plug the y in for the y and see if it actually makes sense. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then do the math. <clears throat> Is negative, is negative 11 actually less than negative 15, or actually less than 15? Yes, it is. So we would say that this is a solution to this equate or this inequality. And then the next one. So same thing. You plug in the x for the x and the y for the y. So negative 1 and then negative 7. So this would be negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 7 would be positive 21, which is actually 19. Drop that down. Is 19 less than 15? No. So is this a solution? It is not a solution to this inequality. Okay, meaning negative 1, negative 7 would not fall in the shaded area that would be for this inequality. And I'll actually go over that later in this video. Okay, what in the world does that mean? Because you actually do have questions on that. All right, so right here, plug in the x for the x, the y for the y, see if it actually makes sense. So that would be 6. This would be positive 12 because negative times a negative is positive. Is 18 less than 15? The answer is no. So this is not a solution to this inequality, meaning it would not fall in the shaded area if I graph this inequality. All right. So right here, 0, 0. So same thing. Okay, I think you guys are pretty much getting the hang of this right now. Plug in the x for the x, the y for the y, and see if it actually makes sense. That's zero, that's zero, so everything's zero on that side is zero less than 15. Yes, it is, so this would fall in the shaded area. All right, <clears throat> so now, Going over these notes, okay, now, what happens when you're given two inequalities and you're asked if this point is a solution to the system of inequalities? So, meaning, for example, let's say we're given three, five. And then let's say we're given the two inequalities, 3x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 19. And then let's say we're given another inequality, 4x plus 3y, and let's say is less than uh, 28, okay? Now... In order for this to be a solution to both inequalities, 
Meaning, if you plot both inequalities and shade them, for this to fall in the correct shaded area for it to be a solution, you have to plug in the x for the x, the y for the y, and it has to make sense for both inequalities instead of like down here where we where we just had to do it for one. It has to make sense for both of these now. If it does not make sense for one of them, then obviously the answer is not. So uh, pretty simple, same process, plug in the x for the x and the y for the y. So here we're gonna plug in three and here we're gonna plug in five and then do the math. So on this right here, that's nine and then that's 10. So that would be 19 is greater than or equal to 19. Well, 19 is actually equal to 19 and the sign is greater than or equal to. So that would be a check because 19 is equal to 19. So that one's good. Now we go on to the next one. Same thing. Plug in the X for the X, the Y for the Y. So we're gonna take out the X and we're gonna plug in the X, take out the Y and then plug in the Y. So that would be 12. This would be 15. That would be 27. Is 27 actually less than 28? Yes, it is. So is three, five, meaning this point right here, is this a solution to both of these inequalities? The answer is yes, it is. Okay, it is a solution to both of these inequalities. All right, let's do another one. All right, so we'll erase these right here. Put another one up here. And you can rewind this video if you need me to go a little slower. So this time, let's say we've got four, negative two. Let's go ahead and throw a negative in there. And then let's say we've got 4x uh, minus 3y and then is less than or equal to 22. And then for the next one, let's say we've got eh, 2x and then plus 7y and let's say it's greater than negative 5. So again, it's solved the same way. Pretty simple, you plug in the x for the x, the y for the y, and it has to make sense for both equations. So for the first one, we're gonna take out the x and plug in the x. Next one, we're gonna take out the y and plug in the y. So this one is gonna be 16, and then this negative right here actually applies to that three. So negative three times negative two is positive six. So that would be 22. All right, I'm gonna actually move this over here. So that would be 22. Is 22 less than or equal to 22? Well, it is equal. So check, that one's good. All right, so now let's go to the next one. Same principle. Plug in the X for the X and plug in the Y for the Y and see if it actually makes sense. So two times four is eight. Seven times two is negative 14. So that would be negative six. Is negative six greater than negative five? The answer is no, it's not. Negative six is actually lower than negative five. So that one would not make sense. So this is no, it is not, it is not a solution to the, this set of inequalities. Hopefully that helps make sense on how to determine if one point is a solution set to two inequalities. All right, now some further notes. Okay, these pretty much most everybody is gonna know these, all right? But we're gonna go ahead and do them anyway 
put the inequality into slope intercept form, which everybody knows this as y equals mx plus b, okay? Pretty much the, and obviously this right here will be an inequality symbol. It won't be an equal symbol since we're dealing with inequalities, but it's the same principle. You have to put it in that form, all right? Be sure to flip the inequality symbol if you multiply or divide by a negative number. This is key right here, okay? And most of the time, it's when you divide by a negative number. Obviously, there can be circum circumstances where you multiply by a negative number, but mainly what you're gonna see is in the problems that we do is if you divide by a negative, then you have to flip the inequality sign, all right? Step two, graph the line. Use a solid line for the symbols, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Notice the line underneath the symbol, okay? That is your kind of key indicator that, hey, the line is solid. Use a dotted line, meaning this is a solid line. This is a dotted line. Make sure that you have arrows on the ends. All right, for less than or greater than. Notice that the signs right here, it does not have the lines underneath, okay? The symbol, so that would be your indicator that it is a dotted line, all right? Shade above the line for greater than or greater than or equal to. And when we start actually getting into graphing the inequalities and shading, you'll see more of this. You'll see one example in this video, but it won't be mainly what I'm talking about, all right? And then shade below the line for less than or less than or equal to symbols, all right? So you'll see number step number three, okay, used in this video, but I won't be explaining it like in great detail um, because I'm gonna be explaining another, uh, circ another uh, concept that you're gonna see on your Big Ideas 4.4 assignment. So right here, first off, we have to put the inequality into y equals mx plus b, all right? So step one, take the x, move it to the other side, and change the sign. Step two, drop the y down and drop your number down. Step three, divide all the way across. Yep, same principle. Now. Here's where you're gonna see my highlighted part right here. Do you see how we're dividing by a negative three? So yep, you guessed it, the sign is gonna flip. Negative over negative is a positive two thirds. 15 divided by negative three is negative five. So there's our inequality answer. Now what we have to do is we actually have to graph it. So we're gonna plot our y-intercept, which is negative five. So we're gonna go start in the middle and go down five. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna use our slope to plot two other points if we can plot two other points. So up two, right three. Obviously, if we try to do another one, we would go off the graph. So we're just gonna stick with two points on this one, all right? Notice that this symbol right here does not have a line underneath it. So if you go right here and look at the symbols, okay, we would use a dotted line, okay, not a solid line because this does not have a symbol below or a line underneath the symbol. So we're going to use a dotted line right here. Now, shading, okay? We have 
This symbol right here, so if you look in shade, meaning the step above, okay, obviously we're going to shade above the line. And I think most people kind of common sense, all right, here would be if you look above the line or below the line, you would see that this right here is most definitely above the line. So you would shade all of this area in right here, all right? And then that would be our graph. Now, I can also ask you, okay, is these certain points um, a solution to this inequality? And you can actually see it from the graph. So for example, I'll give you four of them. Okay, so the first one, let's say I give you two, negative one. Okay, well, what you have to do is you have to see does two, negative one fall within the shaded area? Okay, so two, negative one would be right here. So is that a solution to the inequality well, yes, it is, okay, because it falls within the shaded area. So this would be yes, all right? And then another example would be, say, uh, 3, negative 4. All right, so 3, negative 4 would actually land right here, all right? So that does not fall within the shaded area. So that would not be a solution to this inequality because it does not fall in the solution area, meaning the shaded area, okay? And then the next one, um, let's say we have <clears throat> something like, um, Five, negative three. So you go right five, down three, and then once again, you see that it does not fall in the shaded area. So the answer is no. Now let's say we've got three, negative three. So let's say we've got three negative three. Well, if we go right three, down three, it actually lands us right on this dot, okay? And if it's on the dot or on that line right there or on a point that is specifically in this graph, okay, or specifically lands you there, then it's right on the borderline, okay? then it, it would be a yes. And then you could actually check it. Well, actually, I take that back. Womp, womp. It would be a no. I'm sorry. It is not. It is a no. Okay, because this is a dotted line. Okay. If it's a solid line, then yes, it would definitely be it, but it is a dotted line, so the answer is no. And here's how you could check that, okay? Because some of you would be like, well, how could it not be? It's in the shaded area, like on the borderline. Well, if we actually took the equation, or the inequality, I mean, and then we plugged in these numbers, you would see that that's six, that's positive nine, all right, and we would get 15. Well, is 15 less than 15? No, it is not, okay? So that's why on a dotted line, if it falls right on the borderline, it is not gonna be a solution to the system, okay? And then I'll go ahead and do one more. Um, let's say we've got, um, say, negative three, two. Well, clearly, 
left three, up two. That's well into the shaded area. So that one would be a yes. That is a solution to the system. So if you're given a graph and it's asking you if a certain point, is it a solution, okay, is or is not, yes or no, all you have to do is start from the middle and go to that point and if that point lands in the shaded area then the answer is yes okay if it does not land in the shaded area the answer is no if it lands on the borderline of that shaded area meaning right on the line that you drew if it's a solid line the answer is yes if it's a dotted line the answer is no Okay, so hopefully that clears up everything for the first assignment, okay, that you guys are going to be doing on Big Ideas 4.4, all right, and if you got any questions, you can make sure to email me.